I, I think trends are trends, right? And there's a reason why everyone is talking about personalization. And if you're small or large, you should be doing it. Um, let's just be honest. If you don't have the right technology stack, it's going to be hard to do. Um, and if you, and so for smaller companies, it's going to be more challenging. There are a lot of technologies out there that help do it, that make it really smart and intelligent and enable the entire process. But, you know, personalization is something that everyone should be doing for the same reason that, you know, webinars work for everyone, mm -hmm. right? Um, so we throw out the HubSpots, the Hootsuite, the Microsoft stories, because these stories are so, um, like the numbers that are tossed around, a viewership, pipeline, uh, number of webinars, change in position. I mean, it was Microsoft. They were only doing 200, now they're doing 4,000 a couple years after working with, uh, with the platform. But everything that holds true for them generally holds true for everybody else. The question is, how can you do it? Mm. So, you know, I like to juxtaposition, you know, two deals we were working on at the exact same time uh, that closed at the exact same time. And, you know, before I jumped on a plane to go out to Vancouver to speak with Hootsuite, who gets um, on certain webinars, they get 10,000 registrants and they get thousands of viewers and they require a way of segmenting the best viewers and their sales team does not want to follow up with everyone because they know there's a lot of people there that are just there to learn and are not buyers. So they had to find a way of skimming off the top of the webinar um, uh, viewership the people who were most ready to buy. And in doing so, they had to utilize a lot of the engagement metrics that we talk about over and over and over again. Well, at the same time, we had someone sitting in the studio who I came down to shake hands with because you know it was a company called Tucker Professional Corporation. And Tucker Professional Corporation is an accounting firm. Um, and I use you know the term firm because that's what they are, but it's one accountant uh, with some people that do um, that are maybe their CGAs, maybe their pre pre CAs, but but it's one guy basically. It's Tucker. His, Tucker. It's his it's his corp it's his professional corporation, and he um, he's got a business where he does the books for um, a doctors or medical practitioners, and he was in here doing the, the studio gig, and he was doing doing the webinar program, and 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 you know it, I it was interesting because it was a much smaller much smaller than a who's yeah. right? It's a one guy. And unexpected. I mean, you don't get a lot of no. one-person shops doing these sorts of things, right? right? It's, that's, that's quite unexpected. So what happened was is that for him, it was, you know, he had been doing webinars just like Hootsuite for a couple years. He had been doing the same webinar, right? It's a webinar he does for uh, uh, medical, medical grads who I found out on that day go from making, you know, $60,000 a year to making $280,000 a year. They're in tons, tremendous amounts of debt, and the Sierra makes it not that easy for them to get all their tax credits while they're in school and losing money at an alarming rate and racking up that debt. And so what he does is he, he just says, look, here's all the things you need to be doing, and if you want to send your stuff in, I'll do it for you for free. And the idea is that he does it for free, and then when they become a doctor and they're making that money, they become a customer, right? Client. Yeah. So he would do webinars in the past, but he, he would do like a follow-up, but he didn't know anything about anyone. He didn't know what, like what it was, and he basically knew he was getting clients out of it, but d had no way of prioritizing who he followed up with because he's got billable hours. He's not a salesperson. He's not going to beg for business, right? So we do a follow-up email and see what happened. He always got a couple customers, so he always did it. Mm -hmm. So he goes from doing that on what I think was even a free service or something like that that he was using to coming in here with all of this and hosts and, and whatever because he figures he can use it every year for a while until the laws drastically change. And with the same data that enabled Hootsuite, enabled him to be able to know who to follow up with. So in his case, he's utilizing this asset on demand, which is highly, I mean, he's got a highly focused business, but highly focused and personalized to somebody who is not yet graduated from med school, who's racking up debt and offering to do their books for them. This is a tool that we asked him the other day why he hasn't been back, and he's like, well, I keep using it. Because you know, it keeps working. It keeps working. Like there's not a need right now right. for him and his business to even create another piece of content, right? So, I mean, I'm not gonna say, I think he has a personalized business, so that makes sense, but it, it does speak to the fact that it, it works for it works for everyone, mm -hmm. right? Large or small. 